Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Earth Science Regents of View podcast series created by Homix Middle School Earth Science Department. Today, we're going to be talking about the theory of continental drift. Before we actually get into the theory, we've got to talk a little bit about the surface of the Earth. Our Earth is broken up into different plates. The lithosphere is broken up into different sections, and those sections are either going to be made up of oceanic crust or they can be made up of continental crust. You definitely know your characteristics between the two. They can actually be found page 10 in your reference table in the inferred properties of the Earth's interior chart. Those crustal plates are constantly interacting with each other, either crashing together, pulling apart, or sliding side by side. And that's kind of the foundation behind the theory of continental drift. Well, Alfred Wegener was the man that came up with this idea. And he came up with this ludicrous idea that our continents were all a single landmass that he called Pangaea. And supposedly this existed about 250 million years ago. Now, Wegener came up came under a tremendous amount of criticism here. And you can see Wegener here with Pangaea as if it might have looked approximately 250 million years ago. Well, the criticism was widespread because the major problem with this idea was the fact that he couldn't prove why the continents moved. He didn't know anything about the ascendosphere. He didn't know anything about the convection cells. And unfortunately, Wegener passed away well before this idea even came into came into existence. So it wasn't well after World War II had ended that convection and the ascendosphere gave, became part of the model of continental drift. Well, Wegener, even through all this criticism, spent his entire life work determined to find evidence to support Pangaea, and he did a pretty good job. He came up with five pieces. Let's take a look at each one. Wegener's first piece of evidence is that he focused on coastlines of certain continents and noticed that they look like they fit like puzzle pieces. He specifically focused on South America and Africa, and he saw that their coastlines look like they fit together. The next piece of evidence was he spent some time looking at fossils, the dead plant and animal remains that are found in rocks. And he noticed that there was a little bit of a pattern here. So he focused on a fossil called Mesosaur, Signonathus, Glossopterus, which was a plant, and Lystrosaurus. And what he found amazed him. What Wegener did was that he took the contents and put them back together and noticed that the fossils created zones from continent to continent. So the only way that these animals and plants could have gone from continent to continent, the only way they could have done that is if they were all together. There's no way that a freshwater reptile would have been able to swim through the Atlantic Ocean a couple thousand miles in between the continents. They had to have been together for them to travel from one location to the next. So if the fossils matched up, and in this example you have Mesosaur, if the fossils matched up, then the rocks must have matched up. And that's evidence number three. And if you take a look at this example, if you have a basaltic lava flow, then a sandstone, then a shale, then a coal, then some glacial material in South America, and within those rocks you might find glossopterous fossils, it's not coincidental that the exact same sequence is going to be found in Africa as well. Very simply, it's the same rock layers that just got broken up when the continents decided to split apart. Evidence number four, the mountain ranges matched up. He noticed that the Appalachian Mountains along the east coast of North America match up perfectly with the Caledonian Mountains in Scandinavia and the British Isles. They're not only the same rock type, but they're also the same age. So at one point, North America and the Eurasian Plate must have been together. At one point, Pangaea started to break up, and so did the mountain ranges. The final piece of evidence is what we call paleoclimates. Basically, what he was able to discover was he found coal in Antarctica. In order for coal to form, you need lush rainforests and a lot of plant vegetation. In order for that to happen, Antarctica must have been closer to the equator at one time. He was also able to find glacial evidence in the tropics. In order to have glaciers, it's got to be cold. Some of those tropical locations must have been much more further north, much more further south, where it's a little bit colder. 
Okay, so after World War II, continental drift evolved into the theory of plate tectonics. And very simply because these convection cells were discovered in the asthenosphere. Now, exactly what is convection? Okay, there's a layer in the earth in the upper, upper portion of the mantle called the plastic mantle or the asthenosphere. It supposedly has a composition that's very similar to either silly putty or clay. It's very clay-like, almost fluid-like. Now, because the earth gets much hotter as you go deeper, this asthenosphere is influenced by temperature. So if the temperature changes, the density is going to change as well. If you want to think of a lava lamp, this is exactly how a convection cell is going to work. The bottom of the lava lamp has a light bulb. The light bulb gets hot. The wax that's sitting on the bottom of the lava lamp gets heated up. As it gets heated up, the molecules in the wax expand. It causes the density of the wax to become less, so it rises up. As the wax hits the top of the lava lamp, it starts to cool off. As it cools off, the molecules contract, causing the density to increase, which causes the wax to sink. So you get this constant rising and sinking motion throughout the lava lamp. The same concept holds true for convection in the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere that's close to the outer core is going to get heated. It's going to rise up to the top of the asthenosphere. It's going to hit the top of the asthenosphere. It's going to spread out. And as it spreads out, okay, it's going to drag the plates with it. So convection is going to be a very, very important concept in regards to plate tectonics. Okay, so temperature increases with depth. When things become hot, they become less dense and rise. When they cool off, they become more dense and sink. I put cool in quotation marks because when you're dealing with cooler temperatures inside the Earth, it's still quite warm, but not as warm as you get much deeper into the planet. Again, there's your convection cells. And what you want to look at is you want to look at the convection currents just below the crustal plates. If the crustal plates are moving apart, then your convection cells are moving apart. If your crustal plates are coming together, then your convection cells are coming together. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks so much. See you next time.